Well, hello, you beautiful creatives. So today we're jumping into the second part of this piece, as you can see. And if you follow my YouTube channel, you will see the first part um, where we were bringing the horse to life. So today we're using the same tick as we used for the majority of um, the first piece, which is the angled tip. And we're jumping into working on a pony today. So I'm doing this piece in parts because there's a lot of detail to it. Um, there's a lot of components that are going to kind of wrap it all up into one and bring it together. So it would be a pretty lengthy video, so I'm just trying to break it down to help you guys. So with this tip, as you can see, I'm just creating, like I did the same on the horse, I'm creating some hair-like strokes. Can you see that? Um, I'll give you a little bit better peek in just a minute, but um, I'm creating some hair-like strokes with uh, this tip through there. And then I can go back and I can kind of lay it a little flatter and just touch the edge of it on the very edge of his face and kind of pull up to create a little bit of a darker line. Um, I'm also going to lay it flat where I can add in some shading. And I will adjust my heat um, right now while I'm going through the lighter hair-like strokes. I'm set about a three and a half to a four because I don't want to get it too dark. Now, can you check, check that out there? There's some of the hair-like strokes. Now, we're going to do it in layers, so of course this is not done. We're just creating a base. We're just creating um, the texture and the effect. So, turning the heat up slightly to about a definite four, maybe just a hair over there. Um, I'm just kind of laying the edge on the outside line of his face, his neck, and I'm just kind of pulling up into the center to create a little softness to it and the dark line as I'm, as I'm pulling away. It gives it nice texture to the shading. Again, we're going to keep layering over top of all the hair-like strokes because we want to create a lot of dimension. We want to create a, a little ruffle in his, you know, in his fur. We want to um, really make it stand out, but we don't want to make it as dark as the horse. For one, this is, um, I'm going off of realistic pictures. Um, this is for a customer and she was looking for all three of her animals to be combined into one piece. So there's her horse, her pony, and her dog. And the, the pony is a much lighter brown than the darkness of the horse. So again, we regulate the, um, you know, the darkness by the temperature. When you want a darker color, you turn up that, that heat on your pen and you will get a much darker burn. So I'm just kind of laying this tip a little flat. You could see on the back side and I'm just kind of pulling over and I'm adding some shading in over top of the hair like uh, strokes that I had already created. And I'm going in and I'm just creating a little of that dark shading, a little dimension around his mane. His mane is actually white. So it's a little more difficult when you're trying to burn to uh, leave so much white out there. You have to add just a little bit of shadowing through there. You have to add a little bit of very light lines to kind of break up just a big white chunk, so to speak. So I've switched to the universal tip just so that I can kind of touch on the dark lines of his nose. I've turned it up to about a five and I'm just going around um, the lines of his nose and his mouth. To keep them separated for one from the horse, they look like they're snuzzling right up there and giving a kiss. Um, and to really make that stand out from the rest of his face on the actual realistic picture, it, it is pretty much black. So I've turned the heat up and I'm using the universal tip so that I could get a little more um, detailed with a little rounded effect where the other tip um, is a little thinner. So it's a little, it creates a little point here. So on this one, I just wanted a little roundness to it. Um, I will use this tip here and there on this piece, but not really very often. So now I'm just kind of going in and trying to create a little, um, a little definition to his eye. I'm going in and I'm just adding um, a little bit of 
eyelid kind of around there and a little darkness. Um, sorry about the camera action right here. It gets a little blurry. I did try to readjust the camera and I ended up having my hands in my own way. And so I had to delete those, those clips of the video. So I do apologize for not having a great angle at this, but um, I just kind of go back through creating a eyelid and creating the darkness in his um, actual eye. And as I shade around and leave a little bit of that eyelid white, it will really start to um, be more defined. And you will see when I show you guys a little more close up, which I will do periodically through the video. So using the same universal tip while I have it in there, I'm just gonna jump on over to his tail and I'm going to um, kind of create a little bit of the shading through his hind end, through his back leg around, um, around his tail area, just with a little bit of softness. Again, the other angled tip that I use a lot um, just has a, a finer line that it creates, whereas this one gives just a little softer, a little rounder. So as I'm going through at his tail, I wanna create a few um, dark spots. His tail, in all reality, um, is partly white, but also has different depths of brown through it. So that's what I'm trying to create here with this tip. And I'm just going through, I'm drawing some lines down, but I'm also kind of uh, widening them up, making some uh, different shapes through there to kind of really break it up. Not quite circles, but just kind of going through, making the lines a little thicker in some spots, a little thinner in others. Um, and I'm, I'm doing the darker ones. I will come back through and make some lighter lines as well. Um, it's, again, all on the, the heat that you want to set your pen at will give you the different depths and darkness to the shading. Of course, also the techniques and how many layers you put over top of it. I always, always suggest starting out light, guys. Start out light. Don't press hard on the wood. That is the key. And as you're going, you're going with a, a light heat temperature, you're doing a light burn, you're moving your hand lightly across the wood, you're seeing whether you're going to like this or not. You're seeing if you're putting your shading in the right spot, you can go back over, you can layer over top of it, you can add depth and darkness as you go. But don't burn too hot and press too hard right in the beginning because if you do something that you really don't like, sometimes you could take that light grit sandpaper, that 220 sandpaper, and just kind of go over top of where you've lightly burned and sand it off. And sometimes if it was light enough, you can either lighten it more or completely take it away and kind of reconform and reconfigure whatever that was that you didn't like to make it into something you really like. So always start out a little lighter until you get a little more used to the feel of it and what you're really doing. So here's a little better look at it, guys. Um, you could see how I've darkened the eye, but I've left some white in the eyelid around it. Also his nose and his mouth, I've darkened and left some white around it for those highlights. As I go back in and add the layers of shading, you will see the, the whiteness <clears throat> as the highlights and you go back in with that shading and it kind of softens. Some of these highlights look a little a little harsh and a little um, liney right now, but as I go back in with this tip and I just kind of um, drag it across with, with the bottom down flat, it adds a softness to it. It gives it that slight um, light shading to it that really softens up your lines. So when you're first doing your lines, if you're using this tip sideways and creating hair-like lines like I did before where I showed you the close-up, looks a little harsher. Once you lay it flat and soften it, comes out smoother. So there's the dog we're gonna be jumping into in the next video, but I just wanted to do this piece by piece to give you guys a good look at um, how it's gonna end in the end. It, it, when I'm finished in the end, it will all come together. So here's a sneak peek. Um, that's the finished pony. And you will see in the next video, the dog finished and the background. Stay tuned.